we're staying away from anything that's already down four, five, six days uh, out of the range. So for example, Tesla. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AxesTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had uh, a good trading day. We appreciate, again, once your su support. Uh, please like, uh, and if you're new here, please uh, subscribe. Subscribe, uh, again, we try to do our, our best to give you a non-biased look uh, at the markets on a day-to-day uh, -day basis. So let's talk about this. Uh, if you watched uh, the weekend video, you kind of know uh, what we had today, what we should have uh, should have had today, the anticipation of having today, and all we needed to wait uh, was that confirmation. Just to kind of quick review, uh, again, 50-day moving average. Here's your cheat sheet uh, for brand new traders. Uh, anything above the 50-day, it's usually good. Below the 50-day, not so much. And the way we started the week, we were uh, two days below uh, the 50-day moving average on the queues. Friday was our first day below the 50-day moving average on the spies. And you can see here today, they followed through. Uh, the IWM broke the 50-day moving average uh, two days ago, and now it's continued to build. So again, this is kind of status quo. Uh, and the most important part is, unfortunately, a lot of new traders, you know, they, they still have that ego. They still have uh, the, 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 the entitlement that anything that they buy in a dip will go higher. And that's usually true in a really aggressive uptrending market, but once you lose the 50 day moving average, not so much. And again, you can go through charts. I don't want to, I don't feel like doing it for the 27th time, but if you go through uh, videos for the last couple of weeks, you kind of see how many times we talked about what happens when you lose the 50 day moving average. Usually you'll start uh, a cycle of downward pressure. Now, again, does the market go down uh, every single day? Of course not. I, I don't care how good the market is. Uh, the market will not go up every single day. So why should the market go down every single day just because it's below the 50 day? However, here's the problem. The majority of action until the bulls reclaim the 50-day moving average is going to be to the downside. Again, just look at the last time here, right? Here we lost on August the 29th. The majority of action was happening to the downside, right? You had your up days, you had your multiple up days, but the majority of action was to the downside. So here we are, uh, the reverse, we're now we're three days in. Uh, is it possible the bulls have, you know, kind of a dead cat bounce in the next day or two? Yeah, I, I think so, right? I, I know, that, like I said, I mean, there's nothing that's going to go straight down. Um, so I'm always wary. I always have uh, in the back of my mind that, hey, stay away from the stocks that already made their moves. So for example, uh, a trade like Tesla was phenomenal, right? We even, and again, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second, right? Tesla broke down here, right? You know, this is, this is, as we talk about all the time, jumping out of the first floor window. This is a tight channel here. You know, this is down here. If you're shorting it literally down here at the linear regression line, you're jumping off the 12th floor, right? Again, what do we mean by that is you jump off the first floor, you could probably survive. You know, scrape knee, bumps and bruises, you know, you'll, you'll be fine. You jump off the 10th floor, you know, you're talking about a, a, a ruptured, you know, ruptured spleen possible, you know, breaking your neck, breaking your back, right? Not, not nothing good. And by the way, you might die as well. So we're staying away from anything that's already down four, five, six days uh, out of the ranges. So for example, Tesla, although I still think it probably goes lower, maybe not tomorrow, it still probably goes lower because that's the whole macro area. I have no interest in it tomorrow. Again, just this is, you know, the, 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 the entry was right here and then there was a macro entry here. And now we're all the way back down to the linear regression line. A name, for example, like Apple, which was amazing, right? Which was absolutely, absolutely amazing. Again, here was jumping off the first floor, right? This whole channel here, this whole macro channel here at 140, it got down to this 131, 132 level that we talked about over the weekend. Again, the value, at least the value for the next one or two days, I have no interest in Apple, right? Apple already made its move. Let it go sideways for a little bit. Let it bounce for a couple of days. Let it put in, you know, kind of a new area that of a sneaky pivot back to the downside. So again, I have no interest uh, in a name like that. But at the same time, when you're going through your charts tonight, you'll see there's a lot of really tight looking charts. You guys remember Amazon? We talked about Amazon over the weekend. I really, really liked that. I thought it was gonna break down. Finally broke down, right? Beautiful, finally broke down, took down this whole channel here. Again, we'll get to individual pivots in a second. This thing deserves a day two, right? Not the others, you know, Am you know it's, uh, uh, for example, Apple's down 10 points 
in three days, right? No value. A stock like this, Amazon, which has got below this, this whole channel here that started uh, all the way up to November 9th, this should have a second day uh, confirmation going lower. A name, for example, like, let me just give you guys a couple names. A name, for example, what's overextended? Apple is overextended. Uh, yeah, like, for example, like a name, for example, like Meta, right? Like Meta. You know, you got to watch Meta, right? Meta, you know, is not overextended, not even close. Matter of fact, Meta has been holding to this bottom channel here. Look how many times Meta held. One, two, three, four times. If Meta eventually starts breaking down below this channel here, this thing's going to, you know, look which room you have. You have room all the way down to 106, 107. So I, in my opinion, when, when if, if indeed we do have a dead cat bounce in the next day or so, right, in the next 24 hours or so, I don't think that's a green light to start buying things. Remember, the worst days that you could possibly trade is, is counter trend days. So if the trend for the market is down right now and the 50-day moving average confirmed that, I don't care if the market's up 3,000 points. I have zero value trading a dead cat bounce day. Okay, maybe we'll find something, blah, 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 but that's not really what I want to do. I want to watch out for the names that are not running, right? I want to watch for the names that are not rallying, that are confirming their bottom channel. So if a name like Meta, for example, starts taking down the bottom of the channel here, I'm super duper interested in something like this look at disney right you had your avatar right you had your avatar uh opening very soft opening you know it was it was uh definitely disappointing uh for disney and shareholders look at this channel here guys if disney takes out this channel here that started all the way back to again november 9th this thing has more downside to go so there's a lot of really good looking charts look at microsoft microsoft stopped today at the 50-day moving average right as you can see by the cues and everything else, once you confirm the 50-day moving average, what happens? So, you know, I want to keep an eye on Amazon as well. But anything that is, you know, down two, three, four days in a row uh, after breaking down, it's like, for example, like Google, I have no interest in, right? Like Google, I have no interest in, right? Google broke down here. It didn't break down here. It broke, broke down here. Could it possibly go, continue to go lower? Yeah, absolutely. But there's better value. AMD, for example, right? We've been talking about AMD. You know, AMD broke down below this whole channel here. It's down four or five days in a row. Again, can it go lower? Of course it can go lower. But again, I think there's better value in other places that didn't break down yet. And the most important thing is if there is a dead cat bounce, the first stocks that are, are going to bounce the hardest are the ones that already had the bigger moves, right? Like the Apples, like the Tesla. So for example, in a contra way of thinking, if you turn around and say, well, there's a dead cat bounce day, well, what stocks do I look for? Well, you look for the stocks that got killed, Apple, Tesla, right? You look at those names. Again, they don't necessarily translate into higher prices, but from a common sense point of view, you're not gonna short the stock that's coming out of a two month channel versus a stock that already came out of a two month channel that had a six, seven day decline. And now it's just kind of sellers are tired, at least in that security. So that's kind of uh, the theory going into tomorrow's session so yeah i'm always conscious of the dead cat bounce uh again as you can imagine you know my, my watch list is is, is three thousand percent to the sell bias just the same it was uh yesterday the same way it was the day before again i am wary and if i see any signs of stocks holding their previous day's channel for example you know if a stock that i'm watching can't break today's channels tomorrow, then obviously I know we, we might have a dead cat bounce. I want to kind of, I don't want to, I mean, for me personally, I'm probably going to leave that day alone because again, I don't want to fight for 50, 60 cents while these stocks are breaking down in two, three, four dollars. So I, I definitely like, uh, I definitely like Amazon for tomorrow for continuation. I do believe there's a shot. Uh, they were coming for the 82 and the 83 uh, weeklies. I, I think there's there's a shot there. Uh, early, yesterday, they started coming for the 110 weeklies on Meta. Meta, I want to watch very, very carefully. We talked about Disney. We talked about um, Microsoft. NVIDIA I like as well. Uh, NVIDIA I like as well. There was a small move today, not a big move, but NVIDIA has room. It has a bunch of room here uh, that if it starts getting extended, they did start coming in for the January uh, 150, uh, 150 puts. I want to definitely uh, keep an eye on that. So that's kind of the game plan. That's kind of my thought process going into uh, tomorrow's session. So let's talk about the pivots, right? Again, we were, you know, we were just sell bias. That's kind of where we are here. Uh, Amazon, again, this is the big one. Definitely, definitely the big one. I think it goes lower here. Uh, Amazon, 86.73 and 85.87 macro. If it builds below, can flush. Here is Amazon. Again, I still believe this thing hits 82.83. If the market continues to pull, it took out this whole channel here. Uh, went all the way down to 84.50. I think this thing goes lower. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Uh, NVIDIA, just a small scalp. It was like a dollar and change. Nothing big. And then it kind of rallied back here. 164, if it builds below, can flush. Here was NVIDIA, right? Took out the 64. Went down to like 161.45 and kind of snapped back. But again, decent move. Nothing there. Uh, Lulu kind of held the earnings low. Didn't do anything at all. Uh, Lulu, uh, we talked about uh, 18 level here. Nothing really, nothing really much. Went down a dollar. 
it was hanging. You know, it still goes. I, I still think it sees 312, but it didn't do anything uh, today. Uh, IQ. I still like this thing. Oh, I forgot about Apple. Apple. This was the last uh, last leg down. 133.73. If it confirms, should have another leg down. I, I said we should get to 32. That's exactly where you get to. It got to. Here's your Apple. It got down to this linear. You see this linear regression line? Right, got right down to this linear regression line at 132. Beautiful trade, beautiful, beautiful trade on that. Uh, IQ, guys, for all you guys who trade a uh, smaller cap name, set an alert for this. IQ, look at the chart on this thing. It held, it got rejected uh, four dollars several times. Keep an eye on this thing for the future. I don't know if it'll go today, tomorrow, or the next day, but keep an eye on this thing. Eventually, if this thing that does hold get above four, maybe this thing starts waking up. Uh, Square, I didn't trade any Square. I was already done done for the day. Uh, Square 60, 70. If it builds below, can flush. But nice move, nice move on Square. Uh, it still goes lower here. I still think it just needs to lose this 59.60s for more downside. Not a big move just yet. Uh, spies got hit again. We talked about spies on Friday. If they confirm, take they confirm 381. If it builds below, confirms the 50-day moving average. Here is uh, the SPYs. Took down 81, went down to uh, 78. Beautiful, beautiful move on on the spies uh netflix not a big move at all uh 288.70 if it builds below can flush i think it went down a couple points i really wasn't even watching netflix today um yeah it went down to uh 286 i, I still like this thing 286 below uh can get hit um tesla i mean tesla is the gift that keeps on giving uh 150 if it builds below can flush traded right to uh traded right to the linear regression line here uh to this 40 you know roughly 46 area and then snapped back a little bit again as you saw you 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 knew retail was gonna be trapped in this thing last night elon on on twitter said hey guys i'm gonna i'm gonna put a poll up do you guys want me to step down from twitter you he, you don't think he knew what was gonna happen you know anybody who bought and i said this pre-market today during morning strategy any you know tesla's up by four or five bucks pre-market i said anybody buys this thing pre-market is dead not only is it dead it's kind of comical that people still fall for this stuff uh anyway it went right on the day uh broke below the 150 went all the way down to uh 145 80s just an awesome awesome move uh crowd 110 held twice if it builds below can flush here was crowd great job by stoic right great job by stoic beautiful move here uh it still has more room to go went down like a few bucks and i believe that is it right i believe that is it so that's it that's it guys so business as usual uh going into tomorrow again just keep an eye on you know keep an eye on any potential reversals not necessarily tomorrow but I'm, i think if there's going to be a dead cat bounce there's going to be a dead cat bounce in the next couple of days uh, but again, I'm, I'm, I have zero interest in the upside. I don't care if we're recording the video tomorrow and the Dow is up 200 points. I, I would rather wait for the, for the stocks that are channeling below uh, their confirmation levels, whether it's going to happen today, tomorrow, the next day, than sit there and try to fight, you know, try to fight a stock that's down, you know, 20% for 50 cents. Again, not for me, especially only a few days uh, before Christmas. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Stay blessed, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys on tomorrow's video. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.